Good greetings and good afternoon to all the ones in California. I think it's still morning, so good morning for you. Thank you for accepting our invitation to this last webinar of this semester titled Maximizing Your College and University Experience. Today we have the pleasure to have as our speaker, invite speaker, Deborah Menier Nunez. Uh, she's a Truman Albright Fellow, but also she's a former head ambassador, student ambassador when she was studying at Inter-American University uh, Arecibo Campus. So we are so happy to have you back uh, with us, uh, uh, my dear Deborah. Thank you all for your time and support to these events that aim to provide educational experiences and discuss pertinent topics as part of the HEADS mission to wide student opportunities in higher education. Today, we have more than 100 participants registered from more than 20 higher education institutions in Puerto Rico and also in the US, including organizations. So greeting to all. And we hope that this webinar will be of great benefit to everyone. Before we start uh, the webinar, we would like to share a few things as we usually do. First of all, for your convenience, this webinar will be in English. So closed captions are available in English only for this webinar. To activate this feature, click on the CC live transcript, transcript button that you will find on, on Bella on your screen. Uh, also, please uh, use the chat to share your questions or comments. Remember that in order to avoid any interruptions, also keep your microphone on mute. Our license allowed us to keep your mi microphone mute when you enter the room. But if for some uh, any reasons this uh, feature uh, allow you to uh, unmute your microphone. Please don't do it unless it's, we are in the last part that is the Q&A sessions, okay? And also fill out the form. Uh, I, 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 if it's the first time that you are a, in a webinar, in a heads webinar, you can either look in the chat to request the certificate. It's gonna be a link. So you can go there and submit the information that you will find in the form, or also you can use your mobile and uh, scan the QR code to request your certificate. It's very important uh, that you please, before you submit the form with your information, make sure that your name is complete and correct, and also your email, because if, if you don't put the correct email, then when we try, to send you the certificate will be a will not go get through. So please make sure before you submit the form uh, that the information is correct. And in the next 24 hours, you will receive an email with the certificate and the link to complete a short electronic survey to help us evaluate this webinar and help us identify which other services, head services and initiative can support not only students, but also faculty and administrators and your recommendations to promote these services. The survey is anonymous and it takes around five to eight minutes to complete it. Um, we truly appreciate your time to complete this survey. And remember that your feedback and your recommendations and ideas are very valuable and important for us. Finally, we want to invite you to spread the word and invite you to our next events that we are coordinating for next semester. The next one's gonna be uh, uh, the Heads Best Practices Showcase that is scheduled for January 11 and 12, 2024. This event will be at the Inter-American University Law School in Atorrey. And as you may see, this is uh, the first page of the program. It's gonna be a program full of different presentations. We have more than 40 presentations during these two days of conference, January 11. Uh, you will have a combination of presentations from faculty, administrators, 
administrators and also students that will be sharing their innovative projects integrating technology and other topics include access, online learning, retention, and the student track uh, a, that is focused on technology integration. As you may see, we will have a, a two days of full different concurrent sessions and our keynote speaker on the first date, uh, January the 11th will be Dr. Marta Mena coming from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And she will be sharing with us a very important topic. And the rest of the day is gonna be a lot of concurrent sessions. And in the second day, our plenary session will be with the track winners. Uh, it will be a panel of all the presentations that were evaluated and have the highest score in each track those will be part of the panel and will be sharing uh, in that panel important information. And we continue after this uh, summary, Bella, with the other's presentation of the day. So don't miss the opportunity to go there and see more than 40 uh, 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 very exciting presentations, including students' presentation. To register, go to the heads.org. A next events page and you will find all the information inclu including a link to download the program and see any questions please feel free to contact us also, always we also we always emphasize the invitation to help us promote a more among your peers last uh, your colleagues and your uh, students uh, and friends the access to the peterson test spread where you can find scholarships, practice tests, and the ebooks to prepare for those tests, such as the PCAT, the ELSA, GRE, NCAT, and others, among others. And if you don't know, the password, send us an email to info at heads.org with the name of your institution so we can provide you the passcode, okay, of your institution. And as likewise, you can access the Peterson Career Pre to search for jobs and internship, create your resume and find career advice among other services. As you may see, the steps to enter is the same. Go to heads.org, click on the link uh, on the student placita, look for the name of the database, Peterson Career Prep, and look uh, um, for the name of your institution, click on the name of your institution and put the passcode. If you don't know the passcode, again, send us an email and we uh, will be sending you the passcode right away. Now we are ready to start uh, our webinar, our last webinar of this semester. But first we would like to read a summary of our a speaker today, Deborah Menier Nunez. Uh, she's a Truman uh, Albright uh, fellow. And she has more over eight years of digital marketing and communications experience for, uh, for national and Latin American markets. And she joined uh, the agency in Washington, D.C. after serving as communications manager for the Medical Device Innovation Consortium, MDIC. That is a, a unique public-private partnership advancing regulatory science in the medical device industry for patient benefit. Before joining MDIC, she serves as marketing and communications account manager at Health2 Resources and award-winning this uh, our organization is an award-winning healthcare communications and public relations consulting firm. And Deborah also served as a communication specialist at Excelencia in Education that probably uh, some of our institutions had heard, especially in the States, where she supported the organization's effort to advance educate evidence-based practices for Latino students' success in higher education. As a volunteer, Deborah served as a co-founder and executive director of the HOPE for us, Charity Puerto Rico. And until this year, uh, uh, led their efforts to advance equitable access to education and resources K to, K to 12 students of the public school system in Puerto Rico. So although she lives in the state, she's always Bella, uh, trying to help Puerto Rico students. Deborah graduated, uh, graduate, excuse me, summa cum laude, 
double majoring in entrepreneurial and managerable managerial development and human resources with a minor in psychology from the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico Arecibo campus, where she became the first Truman Scholar at this campus. In 2018, she published her first book called Movilidad Estudiantil en Acción, in English, when we translate to the mobility in action. And this book led to, led to legislation being introduced to the Puerto Rico House of Representatives. And this legislation is pending. And the main purpose of the legislation is to facilitate access to information about available programs. She recently published a second book called Art of Procrastination, Coloring and Activity Book, celebrating the importance of taking a break for mental health. And this book is available on Amazon in Spanish and English. So Deborah, let me stop sharing the bullets that we share with your outstanding Vela uh, career, although you are a young Vela person, you have been very active and we are so happy to have you today sharing your experience and how to maximize your college and university experience. So go ahead. And remember that if you have any doubt, don't feel, uh, feel free to put it in the chat. And I, since you cannot unmute yourself, I will be, uh, I will be pending to see if we have any question uh, during the presentation to uh, ask uh, Deborah to clarify the doubt or answer the question. But at the end, Deborah, remember to leave at least five minutes so we can have a Q&A session. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Joel Kiss. I'm going to be sharing my screen. And if you can please confirm you can see it, that would be awesome. Can yes, you see it? Too. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so you is kind of like drew the arch of like my my career and my experience and all of that. Now I I pretty much summarize who I am very simply. I'm an author, I'm a business owner, and I'm a public servant. And over all of that, I'm an overachiever by grace. So today I just want us to um uh, kind of cover what what did I do to maximize my college and university experience and how you can do it too? Because one of the most amazing parts of me is that the most extraordinary part of my personality is that I'm fully ordinary, which means that everything that I have been able to accomplish, you can accomplish too, and even way greater things as well. So today's plan, uh, it's going to be five stops. The first stop is level setting. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about where we are and where do we want to go? Uh, we are also going to define what maximizing means, and we're going to have an interactive activity. So if you have a chance of like either uh, opening a window on your browser or having your phone available, it would be very helpful because we're going to be using an online platform. The third part of it is it's understanding our why and how it guides our path forward. I'm, I'm a strong believer that we have to set goals and pursue things. But at the same time, uh, I have devised a framework of how we can do this. And that's going to be stop four. And uh, I want to close this session as well uh, by talking a little bit about networking 101, like how to do it, where to do it, what kinds of questions to ask, and uh, in that way, kind of support your goals and the way that you pursue um, what you want to accomplish. Now, the disclaimer for today is that this presentation is given in a personal capacity. It's based on my experience. It does not constitute an official communication nor an endorsement of any of the programs or practices or platforms that I talk about here today from by the agency or the office where I serve. All of the opinions are my own. And um, if you have any questions and all of that, uh, you can send them my way. So, Let's talk about the good about my university experience. We're gonna we're gonna go on a little journey here. The good part of my university experience is that by the time I graduated, I had studied in the Dominican Republic, Canada, and Puerto Rico. I had visited Trinidad, Malaysia, South Korea, and Japan. I had published a book. I had um, completed my degree with two majors, one minor, summa cum laude. And I had already secured a graduate scholarship 
and gain a new network of public servants. Um, all of this was made within my, my time in the university, which can look uh, a little bit daunting, but at the same time, it shows um, how much I was able to maximize my time at the, at the university and all the things that are available for others like you who are watching me today. Now, the less good of my university experience was that I am what is considered a non-traditional transfer student, um, which meant that I had to fight for a year and a half in order to get all, uh, all the credits that I could, the maximum amount of credits possible to be transferred to the institution that I was um, that I graduated from. Um, I had gone to the Dominican Republic to study medicine, which thankfully did not did not happen. But um, at the same time, I had a lot of credits that I had gained throughout that experience that I wanted to bring to my, my new uh, program so I didn't have to like restart university uh, all over. So it took one year at, uh, at a, and a half of going every single day to the office of admissions and the registrar's office to get my credits fully transferred. And if you have had the gorgeous experience of transferring from one institution to the next, you know that there's always a little bit of bumps in the road and extra paperwork and all of that. Now, besides that, I also had to juggle between being a full-time student uh, having part-time jobs in all the student organizations, um, leadership programs, and everything that I tried to do at the same time. There was a time in my undergrad program that I was studying full-time, and I also had six part-time jobs. Do not recommend. Um, and obviously, well, that, that led to a lot of stress and a lot of like juggling time. And it also gave me great skills of time management, but it was just a lot. So this also meant that it took me eight years and three majors to graduate. I started in medicine, shifted to psychology, and then realized that's not really what I wanted to do. Now, this also gave me the opportunity of kind of like fully explore what, what was really driving me in the university space and kind of like uncover the fact that what I wanted to do was be a public servant and help others um, access opportunities and increase the amount of, of visibility that this great life-changing opportunities had. So let's do some level setting. Where are we and where do we go from here? And now I ask that you please join me at slido.com so we can um, start the, today's activity. Uh, when you go to slido.com, the code is going to be 3913. 766. Um, I'm gonna put the link of slido.com in the oh in the chat and okay. the code is 39137666. Well you know what when when you access with your phone go to go directly you don't have to put the code if Perfect. you access with the with the mobile Bella? yes with the mobile okay so great. goes directly Okay, so the code, I'm putting the code in the chat as well. So you're able to access it if you're in a computer. Um, and this first question is gonna be very important. Uh, I wanna know what year of your degree you're on because based on your responses, I can like best direct um, how you're able to, to maximize your experience from where you're at. Um, so pretty much uh, so far we have received uh, several responses. I'm going to give you one more minute. And in one minute, we, we continue to the next question. So far, I'm seeing that we have a, a the stronger, the stronger population is four, th four year students and first year students. That is good. Um, and I'll, I'll provide, I'll provide feedback based on that. So, uh, let's see. Okay, we have reached the minute. I'm gonna switch to the next question. So what do you think would make you competitive in the workplace? I think this is very important as well so I can craft um, the, the feedback when it comes to uh, networking and when it comes to uh, some of the available opportunities. I'm going to give you on this slide uh, about two minutes. So 
I'm gonna give you two minutes so you can quickly set aside what you think would make you competitive in the workplace. I see some of you are typing. So I'll be on the lookout to read out your responses as soon as they appear. Okay, competitive higher paying jobs. Okay, that's one of the things that being competitive in the workplace, discipline, knowledge lead to. Leadership, good teamwork, hard work, yes. My commitment, that is very true. If you're committed to your work, um, you're able to accomplish more, makes you competitive. Integrity, very important. Keep always learning, especially distance learning. Yes, there are many great resources to do distance learning um, and they, they they also produce very high results, responsibility, discipline, responsible, smart, hardworking, all of this great bilingual, being bilingual and know how to work under pressure, teamwork, being punctual and responsible. Yes, being bilingual is a superpower. Um, so it is great. It's great to see. Uh, work under pressure. That is very important, especially if you have uh, tight deadlines, uh, your team team members would be very happy um, that you're able to do it. So I'm going to get that that additional response, responsibility, great. Yes, all of these are great responses of what can make you competitive in the workplace. And the very last question of today is what word or phrase comes to mind when we say maximizing? So when you hear the word maximizing, what is the very first thing that pops to your head. It can be anything from uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil the potential. <laughs> so send over uh, what you what word comes to mind? Access to all opportunities. Yes, definitely. Unlimited patience. Yes, unlimited patience. It's it's very important. Short time, yes, speeding up the, the access to it. Yes. Opportunities. I'm gonna give one more minute for this and then we're gonna we're gonna move around. You see three more, four more are typing. Taking a skill and reaching its full potential, success, leverage, opportunities. Yes, all of these are great words that connect to maximizing. Patience, definitely patience. If we maximize patience, uh, we have peak optimal ultimate. Yes, if we maximize our patience, um, it gives us a little bit of, of lead way there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna close it out after this last participant finished typing. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to maximizing, um, the Merriam-Webster dictionary kind of like defines it as increasing to a maximum, make the most of, or finding the maximum value of. And when it comes to university opportunities, it is very important that we maximize all the opportunities that we have, because that is the, it's one of the core values of higher education and the importance of having higher education. Now, what type of opportunities are there available for, for people, right? We have opportunities that are on campus and we have opportunities that are available internationally. And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of guide you through some of them. So you have the opportunity of like gaining a bit of understanding on this. I have been a big proponent of study abroad programs since the very first day that I set foot in a higher education institution. Um, I fell in love with international education because I did not know that while I was a student, I also had the opportunity of traveling and getting and gaining new skills in different countries. So I opened the door to the international education realm, and it really changed the way that I that I view my experience as a as a student. Right. So. When, when it comes to study abroad, you have different buckets. You have the opportunity of going internationally and um, international programs can be for credit. Like you, you're able to go
go and take classes that get convalidated or transferred to your main program and serve as part as your end goal. You also have the opportunity of going to study abroad to uh, gain advanced credits. Um, so some programs give spe have specific programs where you go for several amount of weeks. And during that time, you're able to acquire a certificate or get a, a leadership uh, program, et cetera, et cetera. And you also have the opportunity of going abroad to do research programs, participate on internships, attending conferences, and in some instances, some institutions also have uh, MUN model, models that are the model uh, UN uh, programs that you're able to like participate on. Now, when it comes to um, study abroad, you have two main ways that you can do it. You can do it through your university. They may have partnerships and programs that have already being pre-vetted and it tells them that the credits in that institution that you're interested in are also available in the institution that you are studying on. So they have already pre-established equivalencies, which is great for transferring your credits, but you also have the chance of studying abroad as an independent student. There are many organizations that allow students to just go abroad and, and do it independently, especially through programs like the Critical Language Scholarship, that is one of these uh, programs that allows you to acquire skills in a different language, and you can do it uh, with it being fully funded, as, as well as like research programs that allow you to uh, go and participate in different organizations programs, which are fully funded. Now, one of the main barriers that have been recognized for study abroad programs is funding. Usually people have this perception that in order for you to be able to participate in abroad programs, you have to break the bank. And that's not necessarily the case. There are many scholarships that are available for students, uh, especially students from Puerto Rico and the US because we are US citizens. So we have access to a lot of programs um, that are uh, study abroad programs and scholarships, and you can find information about them in studyabroad.gov. So if you're interested in, in going abroad, uh, it's a very life-changing experience and it should be access, like access and participated on by everybody. So for example, if you're interested in doing a research program during the summer, um, there are many institutions in the mainland US that have uh, said specific research programs where students can apply without the need of having a partnership with that institution. Some, um, some other agencies and organizations like NASA um, have specific uh, research programs and NIH of which students can apply to participate. Uh, all the different agencies have different kinds of internship programs as well. Some of the internships are paid uh, and there is an increased amount of available internships that are paid. So you can uh, go online and like start searching for internship programs from now because uh, next summer uh, internships are now uh, recruiting people. So if you're able to go online, search for available internships uh, 2024, and that way you're able to do that. There's also conferences that uh, covered the, the cost for students to participate. I was able to go to the Haku conference and they fully funded my airfare, my hotel, and my participation of the conference. So you can also search about those available opportunities through HACU um, and do as well the national internship program. So there are varying uh, ways that, that people can participate of these programs. Now, moving on, we also have the opportunity of, ha of having opportunities on our campus that are uh, portfolio building. Now, what are portfolio building uh, opportunities? These are scholarships, these are certifications, participating of, of student organizations, being part of the student body council, participating in extracurricular activities, and uh, most importantly, connect with your head student ambassador. I'm gonna tell you why. There are many scholarships that are available right now while you are in undergrad that you can find through the HEADS database of, of scholarships. So connect with your HEADS student ambassador so they may be able to give you the code and you can start doing your, your search. Now, when it comes to certifications, there are many programs that you are able to find online that are free or, or free of charge or in a very low uh, amount of money that you have to pay. And these certifications are great to add to your link 
LinkedIn profile, have available on your resume and kind of expand that that skill tools tool set that you have. So you're able to provide uh, additional and advanced uh, perspectives when you are participating of like uh, potential job opportunities and others. Right um, now. When you participate of student organizations, I was I participated of everything from theater to uh, the the local shrimp chapter. Um, you have the opportunity of like building a network of people, and there is one thing that people say that is like your network is your net worth because through all the people that you connect during your undergrad, you don't know whether where they're gonna end up next, and those uh, relationships that you're able to build are the ones that sometimes will let you know about opportunities that are available when you're in the future searching for the next career move. So participating of uh, student, student organizations also give you skills to like teamwork and participate in, in things of that matter. Um, and it's very important that you connect with your head student ambassador so you get uh, that code and are able to search for available scholarships and also available opportunities and getting your resume and uh, cover letter through the system. Now, another way that I briefly mentioned in the study abroad part are internships. Um, internships can be located either by going to specific uh, companies uh, that are searching for interns. You can also use... Um, job search uh, platforms like the LinkedIn jobs section. You can also search for internships in Indeed. Um, there are many internship opportunities. And like I said, um, it has been an increased amount of, of like fully paid internships as well. So you have the chance of not only um, having a, a free internship and in, in for the sake of experience, but at the same time, kind of have that support. Why? Because like more and more organizations are recognizing that in order to attract all kinds of talent, sometimes you need to provide a little bit of, of money because not everybody has the chance of working for free. So internships are available. Uh, these are available in the US, they're also available in Puerto Rico. There are many uh, mom and pop shops or like small businesses that are looking for people to help them out, maybe with their social media, maybe with their with their website. So if you have skills like this, you're and, and there are no internships available in your area, maybe you're able to build these internships for yourself. Uh, now, I want to take a little bit of time talking about the Truman Scholarship. Um, like it was mentioned in the beginning, I'm a, I'm a Truman Albright Fellow. But in order for me to be a Truman Albright Fellow, I had to be a Truman Scholar first. Now, the Truman Scholarship is currently open for people to apply. It's going to be open until the first Tuesday of February. It, that is the, the timeline. It opens in August. It's open until the first Tuesday of February every year. It provides $30,000 in scholarships for college juniors that are uh, pursuing graduate degrees in public service related fields and public service being broadly defined as to have the goal to make a positive impact in the world. So if you are interested in doing a graduate program and your end goal is to help better society in some way, maybe you are a candidate for the Truman um, scholarship. So you can search more information about it at uh, truman.gov. And the pro tip I always tell people is to get the book. Uh, the book is called Wild About Harry. It's available at University of Ar Arkansas Press page. Um, I included the link there in the presentation, like search for that um, book. And if you're interested, connect with your uh, advisor. So if you have questions about that, uh, you can also contact me and I can uh, send over the link. Now, what type of opportunities are there available? Uh, are The opportunities are going to be the ones that you're able to either find or secure for yourself. And I mentioned this because sometimes uh, some programs have a little bit of challenge in in finding the candidates, right? But if you have a goal and you have a why and you have decided that you want to be able to, to change uh, your career prospects, then you have you have to like maybe dig a little bit deeper, knock on doors, like go to local businesses, ask uh, for opportunities of, of showcasing your skills, build up your portfolio through uh, leadership opportunities on your campus by knocking doors, by going abroad, by 
either participating of internships or building internships with with them. Why? Because at the end of the day, you have the opportunity of building your own adventure at, at university. What does that look like? What does success mean to you? What are some of the of the goals that you may have? And what would you need in order to build the skill set and, and the portfolio that those pot potential employers may be looking for? Now, I, I tell I tell all of this because um I don't really think that I ever was like tapped in the shoulder for specific uh opportunities of the ones that I have experienced. I was always looking at the at the boards of, of messages in my institution. I was Googling, searching uh online because a lot of opportunities were simply not easily available for students like me on campus. So sometimes we have to like push a little bit harder in order to find these opportunities that hopefully one day are going to be more easy to be accessed and more easy to, to be identified, but sometimes we have to dig a little bit deeper. If right now you feel that you are in a position where you're not able to build the, the skill set that you need in order to pursue the, the goals that you have, ask yourself, what are different strategies? What are different ways that I can put into place to put myself in the rooms that I want to be at in order to be considered for the opportunities that I want to have? Start building your network. Um, when I talk about uh, networking, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into that. So before, before that, I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit about the framework that I've devised to organize my my searching for all of this. And it's called Ideas Pin. So I'm going to give you the pin to unlocking all of those ideas of how to find the people that you need in order to be in the in the rooms and and the spaces that you need to be at and building that skill set that will uh prepare you for set you up for success in your career. So Ideas Pin is the I is to identify available opportunities. Search online, search on your on your university space, search uh, on, on the different um, departments of your institution to see what opportunities are available for you. The second one is decide on your why. Why are you going to be pursuing all of this? Why are you getting yourself out of the comfort zone to, to find and secure these opportunities for yourself? The E stands for engaging key supporters. Find the people that are going to equip you with the skills or give you letters of recommendation or open doors for you that are not open, open yet. The A is approach with a plan. If you're able to identify the supporters, go with a plan. Show them that um, you're not just uh, aspiring to something out of thin air, but you have given it a thoughtful like consideration of what that may look like. Um, search for resources available is S. The P is prepare, review, submit, and follow up. I is intentionally participate, and N is network, network, network. This framework is how I have organized all of this um, and how I've been able to, to find the people that can either equip me with the knowledge or can support me in the process of like applying for all of these scholarships or all of these programs. Now, Another thing that I really want to, to underscore today is that if you're not, not accepted to a program or to a scholarship that you that you identify, you will have the opportunity of writing to that program and asking for feedback on your application. Maybe uh, the way that you wrote your essay wasn't as compelling as you originally thought. Maybe you had a typo and you didn't notice when you uh, entered your recommender, so your recommendation letter never made it made its way to the evaluation panel. Maybe some of these programs won't be able to give you research, uh, feedback because they're, they're, they are like super busy and don't have availability for that. And if that is the case, um, sometimes um, it doesn't matter how strong your application is, how great uh, your, your background is, sometimes you simply will not be the person that they're looking for. And, it, and it's not because of you, it's because of the program. So if you don't get accepted to any of these programs or any of these internships that you are pursuing, don't let that discourage you. By the time that I applied and, and got accepted um, and received the Truman Scholarship, I had received so many no's to many other programs that um, 
you know, if, if I hadn't had that clear that sometimes it's simply not the right opportunity for you or maybe not the right timing and it had nothing to do with me, maybe I would have let all of those no's discourage me. But I had a, a reason why I, were, I was pursuing all of this. And that reason was that I wanted to make as many of these programs available and to as many much people as possible. So that kept me going when all the no's came in until I found my yes. And then I had another yes. And then I had another yes. So uh, don't let don't let yourself be discouraged if you don't get accepted to a program. Ask for feedback if you can. And if you can't receive it, then at the same time, just like process the fact that maybe it just wasn't the right time or the right program for you. Now, let's talk about networking briefly um, before we go to the Q&A. And um, the most important part about networking is that it's about the people, not the benefits for engaging. Um, people are just people. Um, they may be at high ranks, they may be at high positions, but at the end of the day, they are people. They have feelings. Um, and if we build our relationships, taking into consideration that the people that we are trying to network with are also people, we may be able to find more common ground. We may be able to find um, more, more than just a connection to a job or a program or an opportunity that, that we may want to pursue. So with that in mind, where can we network? We can network at events, we can network online and we can network through associations and organizations that we participate on. Events, thankfully, because of the of all the changes that came um, recently, we are able to attend events that are in person. And we're also able to attend events online like this one that we're joining today. Um, we have the opportunity of like going to these events and building connections, like find people. Um, sometimes people may not feel comfortable with like giving you their email or their or their phone numbers, but most case in most cases, people will feel comfortable in sharing their LinkedIn profile. So if you haven't if you haven't set up your LinkedIn profile, like uh, I recommend you go ahead and do it. LinkedIn is a is a business professional minded uh, social media platform, so you're able to like list out your career experience, your volunteering role, some of the skills that you have, um, and at the same time. Because of the connections that you have, in, you may be able to uh, connect with other people who have like similar interests or are in the same space that you either are interested in going or interested in, in pivoting to. So if, if you're a first year student, you have the chance of start building your LinkedIn with like what you're doing in your undergrad, maybe some of the student organizations where you are or have first participated on. And if you're a four year, fourth year student, uh, you may be able to, to find who who is on your network? Like, who are the people who are um, currently working at the at the businesses or orgs that you would like to attend to? Now, that there, there's another fun part about LinkedIn, and it's that if you are uh, searching for a job, uh, you may be able to send a, a quick note or a message to the person who is hiring, and you can like build that connection through the platform, or at the same time. If you have a friend that works at the organization that you really wanted to go, you may be able to connect with them, even if you haven't seen each other in a in a few months. So if you have the opportunity, I recommend you build a strong LinkedIn profile so you're easily uh, searchable as well for potential uh, career um, career uh, recruiters. So they're able to recruit you as well. So. And um, if you belong to one of the professional associations or organizations, they sometimes host events or have a way of like sharing um, other people that are within the same network and that way build those connections and kind of like do that from there. Now, now what? After you have made the connection, after you have uh, found that that person or that unicorn, uh, professional unicorn that is is going to open like doors for you or teach you what they learn, what they learn, the the most important part is to follow up. Many many cases, and uh, many many instances, people have a great time at an event. They connect. You are great. You are wonderful. They exchange contact information, and you never follow up. 
So it's very important that you're very consistent in following up with people because relationships are like plants. You need to water them consistently, not just throw a bunch of water once you need that plant. Uh, the second part of it is being present. If somebody is taking uh, out of their time to be with you and like share their experience with you, mute your phone, put it away, be present, let, make questions, ask them about some of the of the hurdles that they had to go through in order to, to be at the organization they're on. Um, be curious about what their path is and learn. Like the third part of it is learn. Learn as much as you can. Take notes in your meetings. Um, review them. See what kind of skill set did they have? How did they find that opportunity that it, they really wanted to do? Uh, learn about the rejections as well. Ask them how did they cope? How did they cope? Or did they manage when they didn't weren't accepted to a program that they wanted? And how did that life pivot led them to where they are right now? So, and a friendly reminder, nobody is going to be as invested in your goals, your dreams, and your success as you. So you are the person who are 100% responsible of going out there and making things happen and never, never give up. And after all of this, take a break. <laughs> um, it is very important to, to take a break um, because if you don't take a break, you break. <laughs> so um, this is what I learned. Um, you can do it all, but you cannot do it all at once. Um, and self-care is a priority, hence why I did my coloring books. Now, do you have any questions? I'm, I'm going, going to okay. open it up. I'm opening my camera to make sure that, oh, I like this. That was very nice. Very cool. Uh, the interaction. Um, any questions, please use the chat. I'm reading here. In Slido, you can also submit them um, in case you, mm -hmm. in case Let you don't. Put, is someone, let's connect uh, over mm -hmm. here. That, that's a website you have. Yes, that's my website. Excellent, that's cool. So that was wonderful, all the information. I take. I took a lot of screen screens, so we can, I will always do like a summary of the, Bella, for our records of the webinar and have been wonderful. Deborah, thank you as usual. But we still have two, three minutes left. So please, any question? This is the perfect timing for this. You can write it on the chat since the audio feature is not available right now to avoid any interruptions during the recording. And we are glad we did. Uh, I know interruptions were, well, that sometimes happen. Any questions? I don't see any comments here. I know that everybody say, is the people? We have 67 people still. Okay, I see a new. Thank you for the, thank you, Alondra, for your comment. You say great webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Remember that you will receive the the certificate and on this same email the certificate will be attached in a pdf format and then in the body of the message of the email please you will see the link to the evaluation if you didn't have the time to do it here because you can also click on the link of the survey on the chat but if you don't have time today re make sure to do it when you receive your certificate, okay? It says, ah, milagros, always, she's one of our fans. She says, de verdad, what happened? Se me fue. Thank you for the great presentation and thanks, Heads, for your commitment to bettering education. Thank you, thank you so much. And we are so happy to have Deborah that actually is one of our former ambassadors, as she mentioned, and, and we are so proud to see when our students, Vela, that were impacted in a way by heads are, Vela, go that far. And I know that they would have, still have a huge career, Vela, ahead. So we are so happy. Rafael say, uh -huh, if it's possible, send the evaluation and the certificate. Yes, that's what I mentioned, Rafael. It will be sent by email during the evening. Uh, the, the certificate, if you were able to submit your information, remember to click on the link uh, that is in the chat, you can go up or down and you will find the, the link. 
Let me see, no questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Daimari Mojica, for your comment. Carlos said thank you. Also, Rafael, thanks. Thank you, Rafael. Glenda, excellent. Glenda, very clear. And Deborah just put her uh, webinar. And Deborah, to, uh, since we have uh, some minutes left, uh, tell us where to find your books. You already said, but, but if you want to also put the link, because it looks very interesting. Oh, mira la. Like. First, so okay, my. Espérate. Let me screen screen this. Ah, uh, go ahead. So my books are available on Amazon. Um, from my page, you can also um get to them. Um, I published the English one in 2021, and it was like it was a hit. <laughs> so oh, I translated cool. it uh to Spanish so more people can can have access and just have fun. It's. It's a lot of like very dorky puns. I actually have a book. I can I can flip through it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, but, but it's it's pretty much available. The thing is that like as you could see, like I was always doing a lot of things at all times, always pursuing the next opportunity. And one of the things that I learned is that sometimes you just need to take a step back and like mm -hmm. slow down. Like after you're doing all of this, after you're knocking on all the doors. <laughs> And pursuing all of these great goals because they're still great. Awesome. Go after all your dreams. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's very important to take a break in between because if you don't take a break, you break. It's it's a thing. <laughs> so um, right. I learned to kind of like slow down and enjoy the fact that sometimes um, procrastination is trying to tell us something. And sometimes procrastination is telling us that we are exhausted. So instead of like punishing ourselves because we're delaying something that we're not happy about, what if we enjoy it? Uh, what if we take a pause and we make a conscious effort of where and when to put our, our pauses? And that way our body doesn't have to like force us into, into, into taking a break because it's delaying whatever it is that we need to do. So that's why I did the coloring book. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. It, that was, this is great. And I have to take the, the tip by myself because sometimes I keep working, working and never get a pause. So it's important uh, to do that. And I enjoy, I love the, the slogan of if you don't take a break, you, you will break. And definitely that's happened. And your immune system gets lower and then you can attract a lot of Bella, different disease and everything. So it's very important. So I really appreciate that you share this, not only your experience in your career, but also these other sidelines that you do. Any questions? I just put the in the chat uh, the click to request the certificate in case you haven't done that before. Uh, please click there. Remember to, before you submit the form, make sure read the information you write, wrote to make sure it's correct, especially the email. And also I'm gonna put, uh, or I'm gonna, I'm looking for the link to the survey to also, oh, Diane, I don't know if you're still there, uh, to put the link to the survey right there because I see uh, student access uh, have to be here. So if you want, if you don't want to wake and you want to uh, do the survey right away, you can do it. Okay. I don't know why I don't see Isari. I don't know if you have it, the survey on the copy. Let's see, Isari is gonna add the because I don't see it on the chat right now. I have two more other comments. Oh yeah, she put it. She put it. Okay. We appreciate the one that say we appreciate five minutes of your time to complete the evaluation. It's right there. You can click and take you to our uh, SurveyMonkey uh, platform. And below, be, below uh, above that is the click to request the certificate of participation. So you can do it right away. Jose Acevedo say, it is better to focus on a few opportunities at activities to network or should we take every opportunity we can get that's a question and very interesting Deborah that that's a that's a really great question and I would say um there are gonna be things that are gonna be more of a priority for you than others um so pretty much like set a goal like usually this is how I this is my process I set a goal um sometimes um 
Sometimes there are very few opportunities available to us. So in those instances, yes, take every opportunity that you can um, because the opportunities are scarce. But sometimes when we accomplish the first thing, more people reach out to us and like give us a lot more opportunities. And you have to evaluate if that opportunity is really something that you want to do or something that you feel like you need to do it because somebody who is in a better position told you to do. So don't just... Um, I, I know that sometimes, like, especially in, in my undergrad, I took all of the opportunities. Like I was in the, like I was on from 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. Do I recommend that to other people? No, uh, yeah. I learned from it a lot, but um, you have the, you have the chance of like um, prioritizing what really means something to you. If you don't have a lot of opportunities and there's five that presented at, at, at once and you feel that you can manage uh, the time for those five, go ahead and do it. If you don't feel that you have like enough time to do all of them excellently or like in with all your capacity, then just don't um, select the ones that you really, really care about and don't let the others kind of like take away time from you being able to excel at the ones that you select. Excellent, excellent. I'm checking the chat to see if we see a, any other question, any other comment. Uh, Jose just said, thank you for your time. Thank you as well, uh, Jose, and also for your uh, very interesting question. Any other question we still have? Let me see, two more minutes before we let go, let it go, uh, uh, Deborah. Um, and Deborah, by the way, are you planning to go to Puerto Rico for Christmas time? Or are you gonna be freezing in DC? <laughs> I holiday? am gonna be freezing. This is oh. the first time I'm gonna be freezing, but oh. it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be Bueno, worth it. we will send you all of our warm Bella, uh, weather in a, in a hug, and hopefully you can make it later. And if you come to Puerto Rico, please let us know, uh, because it's always a pleasure to to meet you. I know last time you reached out, but we couldn't coordinate. But I hope next time. Any other question before we let it let go and finish and conclude the webinars for this semester with our special speaker today, Deborah, that was so kind to uh, be here and be available. Okay, I don't see, let me see. I don't see any other questions. So in that case, thank you very much, Deborah, again. Happy holidays, uh, since I'm not gonna be able to see you here in your island. But, and thank you to all everyone here who's still here uh, with us. Happy holidays to everyone. Feliz Navidad y muchas bendiciones en el nuevo año. Y si no los volvemos a ver, Así que gracias. Thank you for your time. And remember that you will be receiving uh, your certificate during the evening. And also uh, the link to the survey and also the link to the recording. Although the recording will be uploaded in a few hours in our website. Remember that in the next events and past events, you will find the next events and the repository of past events, including this one. Remember, we would love to see uh, uh, everyone that can join us at the Best Practices Showcase in January 11 and 12. Uh, faculty, administrators, and students are invited to go. So please uh, make sure to reserve your space on time because it's, uh, Bella, the, the spaces are limited since the law school theater is, is smaller than the Inter-American theater here at the Metropolitan Campus. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to stop the recording.